The recording has started. All right. Let's say Shalom. All praises to the Most High Ahia. Uh, to Wab, I Rob. Hope everybody's having a good evening. Especially coming, uh, still dealing with the fast. Uh, how many? How many people are still on their fast? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six in the room. Brother Jay, you still fasting? I ended mine this morning. I, I did it last night, but yeah, this morning I ended mine. Nah, it's all it's all good. It's, hey, brother CJ said today at lunchtime, so it just he couldn't take it no longer neither. <laughs> Uh, All right, well, that's. No, nah, I could have taken it. I mean, no, nah. nah, so we have to did the whole day yesterday, and we just you know had to work today, unfortunately. So. Yeah, no, nah, but that's what I was saying that's earlier. Still pretty good. Nah. That's what I was saying earlier, though. It's hard to, to, to fast when you're out and about all day long and, and burning calories and burning energy. Now, if you're at home chilling, it's a little easier. But once you start burning that energy, man, it's 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 rough when you ain't replacing it uh, with all the protein and everything. So, all right, you guys, let's uh, go ahead and get into the lesson. We're going to jump straight into it. We're only going to go into about 930. Uh, it won't be a, uh, all the way into 10 tonight. Uh, we're going to go into about 9.30. Um, but tonight's lesson will be uh, called uh, Foolishness Brings a Evil Heart. So foolishness brings a evil heart and keeps you away from the truth. Alright, let me say it again. Tonight's lesson, the title is called Foolishness brings a evil heart and keeps you away from the truth. And I don't think a lot of people realize how that works. If you if you always act in foolishness, foolish and silly, it just blinds you away from the truth. That's it. Okay. Uh, so we're going to get started, brother KG. Break down the word foolish. We have foolish, and it means void of understanding or sound judgment, weak in intellect, applied to general character. So it says foolish, void of understanding, or sound judgment. Okay, so someone that's speaking something and don't have sound judgment on it, or acting act upon something and don't have full judgment, sound judgment. Weak intelligence, basically is what it's saying. You're weak in the mind, just weak intelligence, applied to general character so it's applied to someone's character when you call them foolish because of the way they act and so through someone's character brings foolishness so as you see someone acting certain way you be like man this person is kind of foolish okay all right tonight we're going to start off with uh isaiah chapter 30 verse 10 so we know we named the group about three months ago and we named this group Nazarites without walls and we named it Nazarite without walls for a reason there's no walls there's no walls so that means anything's going to be said as long as it's dealing with the truth it's going to be said and you have a lot of organizations on YouTube who is uh, basically tap dancing around certain precepts because they don't want to lose their members. That's that's just the, the, the flat out truth. You have certain organizations on YouTube. Just like churches. They're no different than the church. The, the preachers in the church. They'll tap dance around the truth. Because they don't want to say the truth. Because they know certain members are going to walk out. Or you're going to have certain mem members. That just don't want to come back. So a lot of people. They don't want to hear the real truth. Whether they, whether they admit it or not. People like to go to church and hear certain things that pertain to them or that sound good. But listen, you get on this line right here, you're going to hear some things that's going to touch you in a way that you might not like. And, I, and listen, I didn't write the Bible. That's just the precept. So uh, the Bible said precept upon precept. You must, you must enjoy every precept. You can't take 60 or 70% of the precepts and say, all right, well, I'm going to pick the ones that I like. And then I'm going to just stick with those precepts. And then the ones that you don't like, you're going to find a way to avoid them. 
So if you get on this line or if you're part of this group, I'm going to speak the Bible. I'm not going to tap dance around certain precepts and then uh, uh, say, all right, well, I'm not going to say this because I know uh, some of the fellas in the group might not like this and they, not, might, they might not come back. Or, hey, you know, I'm not going to say this because I know some of the women in the group, they might not like this and they might not like me, so I'm going to stay around. Listen, I, like I told you guys a few weeks ago, I can care less if you like me in the flesh. But as long as I'm bringing the correct precepts to help you with salvation, that's what I would do. I would rather you not like me in the flesh and then for your spirit to be getting saved. Point blank. It's not about a flesh. I, I can care less. I care less if you say hi to me or bye. You know why? Because I'm going to flourish. The Most High is going to bless me for what I'm doing, regardless on who likes me or not. All right. Isaiah 30 and 10. So tonight's lesson, foolishness brings an evil heart and keeps you away from the truth. So as long as you stay within your foolish uh, and silly mind frame, the truth will get further and further and further away. Brother, you need a chair? You need something to sit on? All right. You sure? All right. Isaiah 30 and 10. Because, I mean, we got, we got room right here now. Okay. Right. Isaiah 30 and 10. We're in the book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 10. And it reads, Which say to the seers, See not, and to the prophets, Prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. That's not going to happen here. All right. Which say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. So I'm going to speak every right thing that this Bible says. Whether you think it's wrong or whether you think it's right. I'm going to speak it. I'm not going to speak the smooth things and prophesy and deceits as as what people want. This is what people want. People, they go to organizations, they go to groups and churches, and they want to hear things that are, are, are smooth. They want to hear things that are not harsh. Huh? All right, hold on, you guys. Somebody, uh... That's, that's Brother Jay. He don't know no better. We, uh... Hold on, you guys. Brother Jay put us on hold. Anytime somebody put us on hold, that elevator is going to kick in. I got to keep the settings up just to make sure. Oh, right. You back, Brother Jay? Yeah, I'm back. All right. You know when you put us on hold, we get elevator elevator music, right? Oh, no, I didn't know that. Wow. No, nah, the whole group is, we got we to gotta, we gotta, we gotta listen to that elevator. I mean, that's all good, though. I, I, can just, uh, mute, oh. I can just mute out your phone from here on out. So if you got to switch over, it's no big deal. Oh, my apologies. All right. My apologies. Elevator music is rough. Let's go to Psalms 10 and 1. So you guys, you have to understand, according to the Spirit, the Spirit says, speak the truth. The truth is the only thing that's going to set you free. Okay? Whether you agree with it or not, or whether you like it, it's only good for your soul. Okay? Now, if somebody's lying to you and making you feel good in the flesh, then when, salvation, when the day of judgment comes, Ahia's going to say, hey, you know you was running from that, that real deal, right? So I'm going to have to judge you off of what you wanted and what you got. Okay? Uh, Psalms 10 and 1. We in the book of Psalms. Chapter 10, verse... I mean, my fault. My fault. Psalms 101, verse 1. Thank you for the, the correction. The water. We in the book of Psalms, chapter 101, verse 1. And it reads, A Psalm of David, I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Most High. Will I sing? I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. O when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. So it says, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. And O when Wilt thou come unto me? So when you gonna come, come unto me, Ahia? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. So no evil heart. So remember, the tonight's lesson is foolishness brings an evil heart. And it blocks you from the truth. 
Let's go to Psalms 143 and 3. So David says, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. And I will do this within my house. Basically, everywhere I will go, I will behave myself. Okay? 143 and 3 in Psalms. Go ahead. We're in the book of Psalms, chapter 143, verse 3. And it reads, For the enemy hath persecuted my soul. He has smitten my life down to the ground. He hath made me to dwell in darkness, as those that have been long dead. So, the enemy has persecuted our souls. We in the land of the enemy, and the enemy has taught us ways and taught us to be against the Most High. So, the way we are here in the flesh in America, the way that America has taught you to be, is persecuting your soul. It's taking you right to the pit. That's why you need to change your ways and get your spirit back in the realm of Ahia and stop walking after the ways of America. Okay? And it says that you're dwelling in darkness. Alright? So that's what that means. Your soul is being persecuted. Alright? Like I say, people that are chasing money on a daily basis, putting the most high last, doing everything but the most high, and then they say, okay, I got time for the most high now. No. Most high should be the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning. Okay, then you go to work, you come home, most high. All right, you have to find a way to get the most high involved. Verse 4. We're in the book of Psalms, chapter 143, verse 4, and it reads, Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is desolate. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the work of thy hands. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsteth after thee. As a thirsted land salai. I Hear my speedily. Hear me speedily, O Most High. My spirit faileth. Hide is not thy face from me. Least I be like unto them that go down into the pit. So it says, hear me speedily. Can you please hear me right now? Because my spirit is failing me. What does he mean by that? That means he's caught up in the flesh. He's doing fleshly things. So since he's caught up in the flesh, he says, my spirit is failing me. All right. And then he says, don't hide your face from me, Ahia. Don't, please don't do that. At least I be like unto them that go down into the pit. So people who, who live in the flesh and they always let the fleshly emotions take over them. The spirit is now failing you. So the moment you get in some type of ad adversity, and now you feel like you can't you can't handle it no more. Your spirit is, is failing you. And all that's doing is leading you right to the pit. Okay? But it says in verse 4, Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed. So when you get overwhelmed with things, then this is when you get into the flesh. You're like, man, I can't deal with it no more. It's too much. They're walking right to the pit. Verse 8. Verse 8. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. For in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. For I lift up my soul unto thee. My soul is failing, but I need you to show me the way to walk. And I must trust in you so you can lift my soul back up. So the moment you start walking in that flesh and you, you're getting away from the spirit, I mean you don't trust in the most high, that's it. You just don't, you don't trust in what he, he has planned for you to work out the way that you don't see it. That's what trust and faith is. Faith is something that you can't see or touch. You can't determine the future of it. So now you have to trust in it. Well, the most I says, hey, you, if you trust in me, it's going to be all right. Yeah, it might, it might get a little hard right here. It might get a little bleak. But if you trust in me and you take some more steps and keep going, hey, I got your back. But the moment you get right here and it get a little bleak. You say it's too hard and your spirit your spirit start failing. Yeah, you might as well just go ahead and call Satan and say, hey, you where's what's my address? Okay, all right. Because you that's where you at. Verse 9. Verse 9. Deliver me, O most high, from my enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my power. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Quicken me, O Most High. For thy name's sake, for thy righteousness' sake. Bring my soul out of trouble. Bring my soul out of trouble. 
soul is in trouble because I keep falling back into the flesh. So every time I fall into the flesh, it, it my soul is in trouble. It says, teach me thy will. All right. That way I can be led into the land of righteousness. So you have to do the will of Ahia if you want to be led into the land of righteousness. But bring my soul out of trouble. I'm, 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 I'm in trouble here now. Can you please lead me in the way and have me walk out the old way so I can stop falling into that, that fleshly trap? Verse 12. Verse 12. And thy mercy, and thy mercy cut off my enemies and destroy all of them that afflict my soul. For I am thy servant. I am thy servant. So afflict my soul. So that's why we just did the fast. You fast to humble your soul out to afflict the flesh. Do everybody understand that? When you fast, you are fasting to humble the soul out to afflict the flesh. To bring, to lift up the soul. To lift up the spirit. Alright, let's go back to Psalms. Psalms 101 and 3. So go back to where we was at. We read 1 and 2. Psalms 101 and 3. Go ahead. We're in the book of Psalms, chapter 101, verse 3. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the works of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. So I will set wicked thing. I will set no wicked thing before my eye. So if you come across anything that is wicked or any person that is wicked, listen to what I'm saying. So if you come across anything that's wicked or any person, I will set no wicked thing before me. That means object or person. I hate the work of them that turn aside. So somebody that is wicked that's always trying to turn you away from what you know is right. That can be your mom, your cousin, adversary. Somebody that's always trying to bring some type of wickedness into the situation and turn you aside and make you follow what they're doing. All right, now you all, you guys all got a text from me earlier about Sister Gloria. Sister Gloria is walking in the wrong way. She's doing wicked things, trying to turn people and bring people on her side to make people feel sorry for her. And anybody that listens to that, that, that shenanigans, shame on you. We got some precepts for you. Got some precepts for you for anybody that can't turn to Sister Gloria and say, hey, listen, you're trying to turn me out of the spirit. What's wrong with you? You need to stop that. So for people that don't know how to do that, you 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 right with her because it says right here, I hate the work of them that turn aside, turn aside from anything that's doing right. It shall not cleave unto me. Break down the word cleave. We have the word cleave, and it is H sixteen ninety two. Hebrews sixteen ninety two, and it is the pock, the bock, the bock, the bock. And it's spelled D A B A Q. Lost Brad Jarrell. Go ahead. And it means to impinge, cling, adhere, to uh, catch. So read it again. Cleave means what? To impinge, cling, or adhere. To catch by pursuit, abide, fast, cleave, follow close, be joined together. So cleave means follow close, follow after, be joined together. So it says, I hate the work of them that turn aside and shall not be joined with someone that's trying to turn me aside. So someone that comes with some gossip and they trying to turn you away from something that you believe in or something like that, it says don't cleave to that. Don't be joined into that, that, that shenanigans. Verse 4. We're in the book of Psalms, chapter 101, verse 4. And it reads, A frown heart shall depart from me. A forward. A forward. So like, a forward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. I will not know a wicked person. So someone that's speaking wickedness. David says, I will not know a wicked person. A forward heart shall depart from me. Break down forward. We have the word forward. And it is Hebrews 61, 41. 
That's H6141. And it is the word Okay. Quash. I quash. I I quash. I quash. And it is spelled. Mm -hmm. You can go silent with A H. A H. Q. E. No Q A. Q A. Mm -hmm. Q A S H. All right. I quash. And it means a uh, distorted face, dis distorted, hence false, crooked, perverse. So fraud means distorted, false, crooked. So Psalms 101 and 4 says, a false, a crooked heart shall depart from me, and I will not know a wicked person. Give them the Webster for fraud word. We have fraud out of the Webster's and it means perverse, that is turning from with aversion or reluctance, not willing to yield or comply with what is required, disobedient. Read it again. Perverse, that is turning away from with aversion or reluctance, not willing to yield or comply with what is required, disobedient. So that's a fraudward heart. A fraudward heart is someone who doesn't want to comply with what is required. So it's like it's like somebody getting a job. And in the interview, the supervisor said, Hey, we require this from you. We require that, that, that. They, they put out five, six things that they require for you to, in order to get the job. And then you say, hey, okay, I can do that. I want the job. I want the job. And then you get the job. And then once you enter the job about a year and a half, you got some problem with some of the things that is required of you. Now you like, well, I don't know if I, I want this job anymore. Or now you start trying to skip around some of the things that they require from you and try to do things your way. And it says, no, I already put the requirements out there. When you came into this job, you already knew what the requirements was. Now the moment something don't go right, you want to pull out? That's not how we're supposed to be. So it says, forward means turning from, not yield, willing to yield or comply with was required. Disobedient. Proverbs 3 and 32. So, we're breaking down forward, which means false, crooked. And David said in Psalms 101 and 4, A forward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. So David says, I will not keep wicked people around me. Point blank, if somebody's wicked, David says, I'm, I'm like Speedy Gonzalez. Pure. I'm getting away from this person. Proverbs 3 and 32. We're in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 32. And it reads, For the forward is an abomination to the Most High, but his secret is with the righteous. So a forward person is abomination to the most high. And what's a forward person? Someone who do not want to yield or comply with what is required. That's a forward person. And they said that's abomination. Break down the word abomination. We have abomination and it is H81 H8441 H8441 and it is to to e to to aba hmm? what you got what's that what's that the, ta? Ta? okay oh okay 
is uh, the Abba. The Abba. Yeah. The Abba. Spell it for him. And it's spelled T H A B A H. To Abba. And it means. The Abba? Yeah, it's right here. Okay. Properly something disgusting. Abomination, the Abba. Something disgusting. Disgusting. Go ahead. Morally. That is in abhorrence, especially idolatry or an idol. So abomination is something disgusting. Okay, abomination. It's one person that don't like what they hear. Go ahead, abomination. And we're coming out of the websites for abomination. And it is extreme hatred. Des desertation. Hence, defilement. Pollution in a physical sense. So this is a physical sense. Abomination, extreme hatred. So someone that has extreme hatred, abomination. You got hatred in your heart? Abomination. Defilement. Pollution. That's what it says. Pollution. What's pollution? On best way I can use it is someone that's like a cancer in, in the group. So if you have a football team. And you got a coach that's working hard to bring this team together, trying to win games, win the championship. And you got two people on the team that's always complaining about the coach. Man, you know, coach always trying to turn people against the coach. That's cancer. Yeah, cancer in the group. Pollution. And I feel like we got that somewhat in this group also somewhat. Someone with extreme hatred in their heart. has they're, 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 they're like cancer in the group. Pollution. Proverbs 3 and 33. We're in the book of Proverbs. Chapter 3, verse 33. We're breaking, we're bringing these precepts because you know what? This group has come too far and this group has worked too hard together to get to the point we are. Feast of Dedication, we was at about 34 members. This past week, at, uh, the other day for Purim, we was at 42 people. And, we're, and that's not even including Brother Jarrell and his family. We're growing. And we're not going to let one or two people that have the hatred in their heart, bring this down. Go ahead. We're in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 33, and it reads, The curse of the Most High is in the house of the wicked, but he blesses the habitation of the just. So it says the curse of the Most High is in the house of the wicked. So wicked people that, that, that have wickedness in the house, that's a curse that's riding within you, within your household. But he blesses the habitation of the just. So anybody that's a just person or a virtuous person, most high is going to bless you. If you keep that faith and you keep that patience and you trust in him, he's going to bless you. He might not bless you right on the time you want to, but right when you need that blessing, guess what? You're going to look up and there go a higher. You're like, man, I was about to fall right on my face. And he's going to put a mattress right under there so you, when you do fall, you bounce right back up. Boom. But if you're walking after your own ways, you're going to fall on your face and it's going to hurt. Alright? Psalms 101 and 5. So, he's going to bless the just. And he's going to bless the virtuous. If you're doing right, he's going to bless you. Now, if you got wicked in your heart, you're going to continue to go through trials, trials, and tribulations. And they're going to hurt more and more and more because you ain't getting it. Once you start getting, oh, he's whooping me right now. Let me, let me change some stuff. The Most High is whooping me. Man, let me get my spirit right. Now he say, "Okay, you learn. All right, let me let me let me put that mattress under you, and then I'm gonna bring you blessing." Go ahead. We in the book of Psalms, chapter one hundred one, verse five, and it reads, "Whoso privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath in high look and a proud heart, will I not suffer." So, pri privily is basically private. Who, whosoever privately slander his neighbor So whoever's trying to slander his neighbor in private Trying to do it behind their back Basically is what that's saying You're going behind your neighbor's back Or even just your friend Or even just somebody in your congregation Even somebody at work This means anything It can be somebody at work It can be somebody in your, your, your congregation So what we got right here is a congregation So whoso privately is slandering someone behind their back Going behind their back and talking bad about them. The Most High says, I will cut you off. Him will I cut off. Bye-bye now. 
No reason for you to be around here. If you want to be going behind people's back and talking to them about other people and trying to turn other people aside to get on your team. Not only are you talking to people, talking about somebody behind their back, but you're trying to gather and recruit people to get on your team to, 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 to be on your side and justify that you're right. Oh, yeah, you're right, girl. Yeah, I hear you on that. You're trying to recruit people to make you seem like what you're doing is right. So guess what? Most I will cut all you off. Whoever, whoever is letting get turned aside and, and, and letting this person privately talk about somebody else, most I is going to cut you off too. So that's why if you're in a situation and somebody comes to you and they start trying to talk about somebody else behind their back, your job is to say, hey, uh, listen, you're not going to turn me into the flesh and have me uh, uh, participating in false lies. That's basically what it is. So the Most High says, don't do that. Because both or all parties are guilty. The person that's talking and the person that's listening. Yeah, girl, you for real? That did that happen? Mm -hmm. you, all y'all false. All y'all will be cut off. Exodus 20 and 16. So you better, we got to be real careful. Like, like the scripture says, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the Most High. Because once you say you follow in the Most High and you still participate in those type of shenanigans, He will get you. Regardless if you ain't the one that's doing it. But if you're partaking in it, you best to believe He's going to chop you up too. Who's going to be, who's going to stop and become virtuous? Who's going to stop and become righteous? A righteous man, a just man. Somebody come to you with some shenanigans, you got to stop it and say, nah, that's not how we're supposed to look at that. All right, break down. So, uh, uh, Exodus 20 and 16. We're in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 16. And it reads, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. That's a commandment. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Don't be out there talking false things in private and slandering someone. I see that going on. I see I see it going on. I see people speaking in private against other people and slandering them and bringing false information against this person. Break down the word false. We have the word false and it is H8267 Hebrews8267 and the word is Shakur Shakur, and it's spelled S H A Q E R. No, A R. A R. Spell it for him again. Spell it for him again. S H A Q A R. All right, we do that. All right, give it to him. What's the definition of? And it means an untruth, by implication, a sham, uh, without cause, deceitful, falsehood. Frighteningly, liar, lie, lying, vain thing, wrongfully. So false means untruth, sham, deceit, liar, lying, vain, wrongfully. So someone that's bearing false witness against another person is wrong. A liar and a sham. Give them the, the Webster for sham. We have the word sham, and it is to mock, to make mocks. So sham means to make mocks. So you out here bearing false witness against someone, which is a sham, making mockery of them, slandering them, laughing, going to somebody else and talking about somebody and then laughing about it. Yeah, you know, that <laughs> make a mockery about them. That's a commandment. The Most High says we're not to do that. Exodus 23 and 1, and he says, and if you do it, it's abomination, and he will cut you off. That's what Psalms 101 says. 101 and 5 says, I will cut him off who goes in private and tries to slander his neighbor. All right, Exodus 23 and 1. Go ahead. We're in the book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 1, and it reads, Thou shalt not raise a false report. Don't talk something you don't know. 
Don't bring a false report on somebody that you, and you don't know the facts. You're just talking because you hurt. You hurt, or you're just talking because something's wrong with you and you don't like it. So now I'm gonna go slander this person to somebody else and bring a false report. Go ahead. Thou shall not raise a false report. Put not thy hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. So, so, so if you see somebody bringing a, a false report, don't put your hand in that. Don't be involved in that. If somebody come to you trying to bring slander against somebody, and it's a, it's a, most likely it's a false report because if they can't say it in front of that person, it's a false report. So let me talk to the, let me talk about this person behind their back. Let me slander them. I'm going to bring in some false information to make me look good. So I'm going I'm to I'm bring in a false lie so the person I'm talking to can be like, yeah, child, you know what? That's make me look good. It says, don't put your hand in that. Put not thy hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. So you're an unrighteous witness if you're sitting here watching this person slander somebody that ain't there. Unrighteous witness. You better become a righteous witness where you stop that person in their tracks and say, hey, like I said earlier, we don't do that. There go another person that don't like what's being said. Okay? So we have to understand, you guys, be careful. You have to be due diligent when you walk in the spirit. And you can't let other people pull you out of your spirit. Proverbs 10 and 18. Oh, yeah, my fault. Exodus 23 and 2. Finish Exodus 23 and 2. Uh, we're in Exodus chapter 23, verse 2, and it reads... Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. So all these precepts are going to relate tonight. Y'all going to get tired of hearing this, this message. The people that are doing such. Because it says, thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. So when you got a group of people and you know they're doing wrong, that's doing evil. It says don't follow that group. When you see a group doing wrong, slandering somebody else, are just even doing wrong, period. Don't follow those people. Proverbs 10 and 18. So we have to get ourselves 100% in the spirit, you guys, because there's so many people in the flesh at work, in your family. They're going to try to pull you away from what you're doing. And they're going to use all type of tactics. Okay? They're going to, and, and you know their favorite tactic? You know, the, you know family and friends' favorite tactic? When they see you changing... They try to say, well, we care about you. We care about you so much and we just feel like you're doing wrong. Well, if you care about me, you will sit down and listen to these precepts and, and realize why I'm doing what I'm doing. And then once you hear these precepts and hear me out, now you can say you care for me. But it, you can't come to me and say, oh, what you doing wrong? You're changing. You're doing things different. So you're wrong now. Why am I wrong? Let me show you why I've changed. Can I show you nobody? When they be like, no, I don't want to. Well, you don't care about me then. Don't sit here and tell me you care about me, but then you don't want to follow up on what I'm trying to do. All right, that's point blank. Go ahead, Proverbs 10 and 18. We're in the book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 18. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that utter a slander is a fool. So, we already broke down the word slander, so I'm going behind somebody's back, but he that hideth hatred... With the lying lip. So somebody that has hatred in their heart, they'll go behind somebody's back and slander them and try to use their mouth with the speaking. I, 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 I'm going to hide my hatred. So they, when they're around, they try to make it seem like nothing's wrong with them. But then when they go behind somebody's back, they get the, with them lip speaking conversations, slandering somebody, which is a fool. That's hatred. You're trying to hide your hatred? No, if you hate somebody or something, show it to them. Don't go behind their back and try to act like you don't hate them in front of them but then behind their back you got these lying lips trying to bring them down and slander them out fool break down the word fool we have fool and it is H3684 H3684 and it is Kasa, Kasa, y'all, Kasa, y'all, Kasa, y'all. Spell it wrong. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. Kasa, 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 y'all. Kasa, y'all. That gives you y'all. Yeah. Okay. Kasa, y'all. 
You see it now? Yeah, I see All right, spell it for me. And it is uh, K A S S A S A L A. No, you missed your Y. Y. That's why you didn't see the Kasaya. Okay. Kasaya. Hey, you guys, you got to excuse the brothers. We're learning Hebrew, and these brothers are trying to pronounce these words without their cheat sheets, and they're, and they're, and they're doing a good job. We're, they're really picking up on it. All right, but they're trying to recognize these letters without using uh, their chart. Okay, spell it for me again. It is uh, Kasaya, and it's K A S A Y A L. There you go. All right. All right. Uh, give them the definition. Uh. And the definition is laugh uh, properly fat. That is figuratively stupid or silly. So the word fool means stupid or silly. People don't expect to see these words in the Bible, huh? They don't expect to see that. How you gonna call me stupid or silly? Well, you know what? You wanna be called fool? Then I can call you a fool. Which one you want? All right, all right. Which we pick your poison? Okay, I can call you whichever one that sounds good to your ears. But the word fool means stupid or silly. Proverbs 10 and 19. Go ahead. We're in the book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 19. And it reads, In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. So people that refrain his lips means like, if you got something to say about somebody, you better refrain your lips and, and wait for the right spirit to come and change that evil heart. In the multitude of words there wanted not sin. All right, verse 20. Verse 20. The tongue of the just is a choice silver. The heart of the wicked is a little work. So people with a wicked heart, you're nothing. You're worth nothing. You're Listen, get out of here. You're worth nothing to me. Somebody that has a wicked heart is little worth. Your worth is nothing around this camp. So then people we got a wicked heart, you be like, why are you treating me like this? Well, you're, you're, listen, the more and more I see wicked come from your heart, the, the, the more and more you do this. You're worth nothing after a while. You don't love me no more. You're right. I don't. Go ahead. We in uh, the book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 21, and it reads, The lips of the righteous fed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. The blessings of the Most High, it make make it rich, and He addeth no sorrow with it. So, the blessings of the Most High, He's gonna make you rich in the way to where you can do things that He wants, and He addeth no sorrow with it. So, people that are wicked, you're worth nothing. But people that are righteous and doing right, right, the Most High is gonna add to you. He's gonna bless you. Verse twenty-three. Verse twenty-three. It is a sport to a fool to do mischief. Read it again. It is as sport to a fool to do mischief. But a man of understanding hath wisdom. People didn't know the word sport was in the Bible, huh? It is as sport to a fool to do mischief. So a fool that's doing mischief is like a sport to them. They having fun with it. Break down sport. I'm, I'm having fun with this. This ignorance. Go ahead. We have the word sport. And it is H7814. H7814. That's my shot. That's H. Alright. That's the H. Alright. Okay. I know I know what you're on the key. So it's uh Sh Shakoa. Shakak. 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 Yeah, Shakak. You gotta get that at the end. Shakak. Alright, spell it for him. And it is S H A C H A Q. A A Q. A A Q. A A Q. 
that he got some stuff that extra extra age. Shit, cock. All right. I don't want to spit on the screen. Like, I, it, just, so spit on the screen if you got to get it out. Bro. <laughs> get a definition of it. Uh, and it means laughter, to laugh, in pleasure, detraction, by implication to play. So sport means laughter, to laugh, in pleasure, or distraction, to play. Playing around. You playing games? Is this what's going on here? Let's get the Webster then. Get the Webster definition. And we have sport coming out of the Webster, and it says that which diverts and makes merry play game. Game, it says it. Sport in the Webster says that which diverts and makes merry play game. So sport. So Proverbs 10 and 3 and 23 says it is as a sport to a fool. A sport to a fool to do mischief. It's a game to a person that's that's a fool. They they having fun when they bring in this mischief. But a man of understanding had wisdom. Proverbs twenty six and six uh, twenty six and seventeen. I tell people, listen, if you're struggling in the flesh, go read Proverbs. Proverbs will get you correct, like within moments. All right, it, 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 Proverbs don't mess around with you, okay? But someone. A fool that's bringing mischief, it's a game to them. It's like a sport. I'm having fun. All right? Go ahead. We're in the book of Proverbs, chapter 26, verse 17. And it reads, He that passeth by and meddleth with strife, belong, belonging not to him, is like one that taketh the dog by the ears. We're going, we're going, we're going, we're going, folk, hey. Read that again. That's that's serious right here. People don't understand. I, I told you a lot of these precepts are going to tie right into each other tonight. Read that again. We're in the book of Proverbs, chapter 26, verse 17. And it reads, He that passeth by and meddleth with strife belong not to him. So let's stop right there. So he that passes by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him. So that's somebody else's problem. So if somebody else got a problem, and then they try to bring it to you and, and drag you into it, especially if it's something dealing with putting somebody else down or slandering somebody. So I got a problem with such and such. So I'm gonna go talk to, I'm gonna go talk to some people, and and, and, and slander this person. Let me bring such, let me bring such and such into this. Let me bring such and such into this. Let me bring everybody into this. And, and, and let them know about my problem. I'm having such a hard time. Let me bring everybody in and let them know. And it says, He that passes by and meddleth with strife, belonging not to him, you might as well go grab a dog by his ears. Go grab a dog by his ears right now and see what that dog, especially if it's a pit, pit, pit bull. Go grab a dog right now and by his ears. And if it ain't your dog, let's see what that dog is going to do to you. He's going to gnaw you up. So it's the same thing. When somebody brings something to you, and especially if this problem that they have is about somebody else and you get involved in it and just be like, oh, yeah, yeah. Instead of saying, hey, I don't want nothing to do with that. Listen, that's your problem. You deal with it. I'm not going to be a part of that because you know what? I'm not going to get bit by a hire. He ain't going to cut me off. That's what cut off. You remember we said earlier, you get in somebody else's mix, you're going to get cut off. Well, that's what happens when you grab a pit bull by the ears, he's going to he's going to bite something off. Break down strife. So it says, he that passes by and meddleth, meddleth, meddleth means messes with, with strife belonging not to him. Break down strife. We have the word strife. And it is Hebrews 7379. 8379. And it is Rayaba. Rock. Or you could. Okay, you got that. Yeah. It, you can say, we take that one. Okay. Or is Ryabot or Rock? Rock. Rock. And it's spelled R A Y A B. And it means a contest, personal or legal, adversary, adversary. cause, chiding, contend, or contention. Controversy. So we'll stick with it. So strife means contest, 
personal or legal. So if somebody has a personal contest, if somebody has a personal controversy, it tells you to stay away from it. Ain't that what we just read? If somebody has a personal contest, you're to stay away from it. Give them the Webster for contest. We have the word contest, and it means to dispute, mm -hmm. to strive earnestly, to hold or maintain, to struggle, to defeat. To defend. Defend. So contest means to dispute, to struggle, to defend. So if somebody has their own personal contest and they're struggling with it, the Most High says you're to stay away from it. If some, let me say it again. If somebody has their own personal, because strife means contest, personal or legal. So if somebody has their own personal contest, something that they're disputing. So if somebody comes to you and they're having a problem with something and they're disputing something, they can't comply with it. They're struggling with it. It says you're to stay away from it. Why? Because it's like taking a dog by the ears. Proverbs 26 and 18. We're in the book of Proverbs, chapter 26, verse 18. I'm bringing these precepts because I care about y'all soul. And I, I, I see people getting tied up in this. What, right what we're talking about tonight, I see a lot of people doing this and they don't even realize what it's doing to their spirit. Most of says somebody got a dispute or they struggling with something on their own. If you can't help them in a virtuous way to give them precepts or something, stay away from it. Especially if it has something to do with slandering other people. I'm giving y'all the precepts tonight to, 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 to help you with your spirit. Don't let it happen to you. Go ahead. We're in the book of Proverbs, chapter 26, verse 18. And it reads, As a madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death, so is the man that deceiveth his neighbor, and saith, I am not, I am not I in sport. So it says a person that deceiveth his neighbor, somebody that's going behind his neighbor's back, or somebody's back, and then they say, am not I in sport? I'm, you know what I'm saying? They asking, they asking, am I not in sport? So these people know what they're doing. These people know they're playing games. All right? Proverbs 18 and 1. So don't be that person. Don't be that person that's out there in the sport of foolishness. That's the sport we're talking about tonight. The foolish sport. Don't get caught up in that sport. Proverbs 18 and 1. We're in the book of Proverbs. Chapter 18. Verse 1. And it reads. Through, through desire. A man. Having separated himself. Seeketh. And intermediate meddleth with all wisdom. So it, we read earlier where it says, "Don't meddle it with something that ain't yours." All right. Through desire, a man having separated himself. So somebody that separates himself from what wickedness. Someone who separates themselves from what evil. They seek it to e intermeddle it with wisdom. So don't meddle it with something that somebody else's personal problems. No, you need to meddle it, intermeddle it with wisdom. Verse 2. Verse 2. A fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. So a fool had no delight in understanding. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to have knowledge. But that his heart may discover itself. Verse 3. Verse 3. When the wicked cometh, then cometh also content. And with ignom, ig, ignominy, mm -hmm. reproach. So, it says, when the wicked cometh, then cometh also contempt. Break down the word contempt. So when the wicked person come, contempt comes. Let's see what contempt means. Contempt. We have the word contempt. And it is H-937, H-937, and it is yeah. 
I with the B, the B A. That's a yacht. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. No, it is. It's a wah. That's a wah. Ba. That's a wah. Yeah. Okay. And it is bawa. Bawas. 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 B a w a z z. B a w a z. Bawa. B a w a z bawas. And what is content? What is bawas? Which is content? What does it mean? Disrespect. Disrespect. So content means disrespect. So it says in this precept, content means disrespect. So it says when the wicked coming, then coming also disrespect. All right. And then, uh, ig ignominy. And with ignominy, reproach. Break down ignominy. We have the word ignominy, and it is public disgrace, shame, reproach, dishonor. So when the wicked come, and then come as disrespect, which is contempt, and then with ignominy, public disgrace. All right. So public disgrace comes following after this person. Okay. Read verse 4. Or dishonor. Whichever one you want to read. Go ahead. We're in the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 4. And it reads, The words of a man's mouth are as deep as waters, and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. It is not good to accept the person of the wicked to overthrow the righteous in judgment. So it says it is not good to accept someone who is wicked. I don't care if, if this person is your friend. I don't care if you like this person. Oh, I like such and such. Yeah, I know they got an evil heart, but I like them. No, it said it is not good to accept a person of the wicked. And especially if this wicked person is trying to overthrow the righteous. Shame on this wicked person. Who is this wicked person trying to overthrow the righteous in judgment trying to judge a righteous person who are you who are you to judge someone that is righteous and the most in the, in the precepts right here says don't accept somebody with that wicked heart verse 6 verse 6 a fool's lips enter into contention and his mouth calls for strokes we're about to get into some some meat and potatoes right here Few people ain't gonna like what they're about to read right now in these precepts. It's gonna get a warning. Read it again. Proverbs 18 and 6. Chapter 18, verse 6, and it said, A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. So it says his mouth, so a fool. A fool's lips. So if you want to keep talking silly, you want to just keep talking outside of your mouth, it enters into contention. And his mouth call it for strokes. Strokes mean blow. Blows. We know what strokes mean. It means blows. Some some Mike Tysons. Some yuckum yuckums. Break down contention in the Webster. We have the word contention. And it means Strife, struggle, a violent effort to obtain something, or to resist a person, strife in words or debate, quarrel, angry contest, controversy. So contention can mean strife, struggle, a violent effort to obtain something. What's a violent effort? So if I try to keep something away from KG, like, man, that's mine. I'm trying to keep it away from him. Hey, it, it can come to strokes. Or to resist a person. Strife in words or debate. What's strife in words or debate? Argument. I want to just keep arguing. Strife. Words and debate. I'm going to just keep debating you then. I'm going to just keep arguing with you then. You can't do nothing to me. So I'm going to just keep arguing with you then. Quarrel. Angry contest. Controversy. So contention is resist. To resist a person. Strife in words or debate. Webster for resist. We have the word resist, and it means to stand against, 
to withstand. Hence, to act in opposition or to oppose. So I oppose. I'm against what you're saying. So I'm going a, I'm to a argue with you. I'm going to debate with you then. So listen. A fool's lip enter into contentions and a mouth call it for strokes. This could be anything. It could be somebody that's, that took something or somebody that's talking smack to you or someone that's arguing with you. It's a lot of ways you can look at these fool's lips that are entering into contention. It could be somebody that comes to you and say something stupid or it could be somebody that just says, hey, I'm going to argue with you all night long. I want to debate. I'm, a, I'm against you. I oppose you. So I'm going to debate you all night with my words. Let me show you what, let me show you guys what the most hot thinks about that. Because you also have situations. Of course, you have men where it says, hey, you have two men that might, something might happen and he, a fool might say something stupid and it might bring some blows. That's one way this can happen. Or strife in words or debate, quarrel, all right, resist. I'm a, I oppose what you're saying. Could be in the household. It can be in a household with a husband and a wife where a wife says, well, I oppose what you're saying, so I'm, I don't like what you're doing, so I'm going to just argue with you all night. Strife and words or debate. I'm going to just argue. And, 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 and since we live in America, and since we've been taught the haughtiness of America, what a woman, oh, you can't do nothing to me anyway, so I'm going to just talk all night long. I'm going to just run my mouth, run my mouth. You can't do nothing. Because that's what America's taught you. So a woman... Especially when she has a righteous man, the only way she can bring him out of his spirit is by what? Yum, yum, yum. Womp, womp. Womp, womp, womp. Right. Or what's our say? What we come up with? Right. <laughs> so we don't use one week a week. The fellas the other day came up with. <laughs> Scooby. <laughs> we'll have Scooby talk. That's, how, that's, what, that's what it sounds like. What do you mean? What you. For real? She's going to be all night long. Only thing I understand is. Okay. <laughs> right? Scooby, when Scooby talk, all you understand is okay, right? Everything else, you know, you'll be like, what does Scooby just say? But he got that snack, though, right? <laughs> but same, it's the same thing, though. Women in the household just all night long because they feel like I could just battle him all night long with my word. Let me show y'all what the Bible says about the balance. Go to Proverbs 20 and 30. Since you think you could just sit here and battle a righteous man all night, Word after word. I'm going to just argue with him then. I know he writes this. He ain't going to do nothing to me. Nah, 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 Trying to take that spirit. Proverbs 20 and 30. Trying to take him out of that spirit. Trying to take him out of that spirit. Let's see what the precepts say. Remember, I didn't write this. King James. King James says, hey, according to the precepts of the Most High, this is, this is, this is it. Proverbs 20 and 30. We're in the book of Proverbs. Chapter 20, verse 30, and it reads, The blueness of a womb cleanseth away evil. Hmm. So do it stripes the inward parts of the belly. So we're going to take our time with this one too. It says, The blueness of a womb cleanses away evil. So how do I get this evil spirit out of my heart? I mean, out of my house. You want to just keep striping me all night long? All night? Can't do nothing to me. Right now, blueness. We have the word blueness. That's, 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 that's a word now. Okay. Let's see what you got. And it is H2250. H. Get this one. That one you need. Get that first one. That first one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nah, this one right here. Oh, this one. Right here. Okay. We have the word blueness, and it is H twenty two fifty. H twenty two fifty. You can spit on the screen now. You know, right? <laughs> I got. I got wipes. Go ahead. <laughs> and the word is man. Ka -a ba. Ba ra. Right, so you read that. You don't read their spelling. Read your words. <laughs> Go ahead, try again. Don't read. Don't read those words in front of you. Read the, the letters. Right, you read those it, words. It's gonna tie you up. All right. So that, that's C H B A. R R R A H. Ka ka ka. 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 Ka.
Kaba Ra. Yeah, you know, Ka Kabara. 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 All right. And it means. Spell it for him. Is uh, C H A B A R A H. All right. So, blueness is Kabara. What does it mean, blueness? And it means properly bound with stripes. That is a whale or a black and blue mark itself. Hmm. Blueness is bruise or hurt. So blueness means to bound with stripes. That is a whale, black and blue mark. Bruise, hurt. Break down the word bound. Bound, li a limit. So it's a limit. Don't go crazy with it now. Just enough to do what? Take away that evil. Just enough. Just enough to get that attention. Huh? Did that just happen? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it did. Will, well. We have the word well. And it is... The mark of a strike. The mark of a strike. What's the mark of a strike? I'm going to leave. It's some evidence. It's some evidence on what just happened here. Yes, it is a bruise. There's some evidence. That's what it just says. So it says the blueness of a wound cleanses away evil. Cleanses away evil means to purify. So I need to get rid of this evil. So I need to purify. Cleanses means purify. So I need to purify this evil. Alright. So do stripes. The inward part of the belly. Break down stripes. So do stripes. We have. So do stripes. And it is. H. 43.47. H. 43.47. And it is Maka ma, Maka 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 And it is M A K A H mm -hmm. And what does stripes mean? And it means so so the stripes means a blow mm -hmm. by implication a wound mm -hmm. carnage mm -hmm. Pestilence. So, stripes means a blow. By implication, a wound. Figuratively, carnage. What is carnage? Break down Webster definition for carnage. And we have carnage. And it is literally flesh. Flesh. Carnage is flesh. So it says the blueness of a wound, right? The, the the bruise of a wound cleanses away evil. So the blueness, the bruise of a wound takes away evil. And the blow, which is stripes, so so do stripes, so do blows the inward part of the belly, which is carnage, which is flesh. Now listen. I'm not telling nobody in here to go outside and start beating somebody down. There's somebody, uh, uh, like we read in, in Proverbs 18 and 6, a fool's lips enter into contentions. I'm not telling you to go outside and start just beating up on somebody because they started talking stupid. But listen, if those lips get to a point to where the, the spirit of the Most High says, hey, it's time. You ain't gonna just keep letting this dude disrespect you. It's time. Do what you gotta do. Same with the woman in the house. Listen, I don't care how y'all read these precepts. These precepts say, hey, a, a righteous man can only take so much. So same with the woman. That contention means strife and words or debate controversy. So if a woman's all night long, the man says, hey, I said, chill now. Chill. Man even try to leave the house. I'm, I'm going to leave for a minute because I know you got, you got something going on in the flesh. I'm going to get out of here. Man go on his journey, come back five hours later, and guess what he come back into the house with? All night long. 
Come on, son. I said, hey, you think I'm going to just let this man just sit here and get smashed up in the spirit? You just going to keep fleshing them all night long? You think I'm going to just allow this to happen? Most I ain't going to allow it to happen. I promise you. And let me show you how. Let me show you how this, this, this all play together. Go to Proverbs 20 and 18. Let's, let's, let's confirm how the Most High wants this done. I'm not just saying, hey, if your woman starts talking crazy to you, go slap her. I'm not saying that. But hey, if you woman is talking crazy to you, debating, strife, arguing, strife. And you say, hey, you know what? I'm going I'm to let you deal with yourself. I'm going to get out of here. And then you try to hit her with some reproof and some precepts. And she still don't get it. And you come back home, still. <laughs> and then now it's, it's making your spirit weary. The most high going to show you what to do. Go ahead. We're in the book of Proverbs, chapter 20, verse 18. And it reads, every purpose is established by counsel. Every purpose is established by counsel. Counsel means you're going to get instructed on what to do. Every purpose is established by counsel. Go ahead. And with good advice, make war. So with good advice, which is the counsel. So since every purpose is established by counsel, with good advice coming from Rawak and Ahaya, now it's time to make war. Once you have the right advice, then you can make war. Verse 19. Verse 19. He that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. Therefore meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. Okay. So every purpose is established by counsel. Alright. And with good advice make war. So the most high will tell you when it's time to go to war. He will give you the counsel and say, alright, enough is enough. Handle that. But remember, it's got to be limited. All right. He that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. Break, break down talebearer. We have uh, the Webster. We have the word talebearer coming out of the Webster's, and it says, a person who officiously tells tales, one who impertinently communicates intelligence or anecdotes and makes mischief in society by officiousness. So, a person who officially tells tales, a tale bearer, someone that's lying. He that goeth about as a liar revealeth secrets. Therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. Don't meddle with this person. Alright, mischief. Break yeah. down the word mischief. We have the word mischief. And it is international injury. Inten intentionally. intentionally intentionally injure injury harm or damage done by design so a tale bearer is a person who officially tells tales and then it says and makes mischief in society all right so someone that intentionally injures somebody so this is not us we're not a tale bearer we're not intentionally going and injuring somebody and doing harm or damage done by design that's what mischief says mischief is intentionally injured Harm or damage done by design. So we're not going to plan. We're not going to sit here and, and plot to hurt somebody. You just can't go out and start beating up on people like I said. But if the most high. Alright. Establish some type of counsel in you. Which is every purpose is established by counsel. And with good advice make war. Then that's when you go make war. But you can't just all of a sudden. Just because someone has, you have mischief in your heart, you want to go do damage to somebody. Alright? So it says, tell bearer, a person that makes tales and makes mischief in society. Breaks down society. We have society. Webster. Coming out of the Websters and is uh, the union of a number of rational beings. So society is a union. A number of rational beings. So you can't just go make mischief in society. You can't just go out and start damaging a number of people. Beating up on a group of people. That's not what we're about. Alright. Proverbs 20 and 18 says for every purpose is established by counsel. So the Most High will guide you on every purpose. And with good advice. So good advice from Ahia. Will he make war? Okay. In the door. Alright. The door. Psalms 101 and 6. We got about 15 minutes left. Psalms 101 and 6. 
We're in the book of Psalms, chapter 101 and 6. So before we go to that, listen. Like I said, I don't want nobody thinking I'm giving people permission to go home and start slapping them around on, on their women. And I'm not giving nobody permission to go to the mall or go to the gas station and somebody, the moment somebody says something stupid to you, you walk over to them and punch them in the face. The Most High said it's got to be, a, it's a protocol to this. But also women, y'all have to understand, if you got a man who's sacrificing himself to the Most High, he's giving everything up, changing his life to become a righteous man. And you continue to think you can do, argue and, and debate him? Because now you know he's righteous and he's doing everything in the spirit to stay humble. So the only way you can get at this man now is by acting ignorant with him. So you think, well, you can't do nothing to me. I'm going to just all night long, all day long. That's, you know, that's three days going into some ignorance. And you just think nothing can happen. The most high is going to give that man counsel and say, hey, listen. Go ahead. Go ahead. I advise, this is how I advise you to take care of this war. This is in the precepts. You have to understand, even in America, the, the state you live in right now, the, the country you live in right now, for years, for years, it wasn't, it wasn't no coincidence that the women didn't have no rights. It wasn't a coincidence that the women couldn't speak without being spoken to. That was here in America years ago. Because they was doing what? They was trying to follow the Bible but piece it out the way they wanted to. America was, women was in a certain position because they was trying to follow what these, the Bible said. But doing it the way they wanted to. But then the government got so haughty in their mind and wanted to go against a higher in every way. That's when they started giving women all these rights. This is when they started giving women all these good jobs so the woman can think she's equal to the man. So now who are you to tell me to get in my place? Listen, I watched a John Wayne movie three weeks ago. About 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm sitting here chilling. A John Wayne movie, come on. I like John. So sometimes I like I see John, I'm like, all right, cool. And it was a movie where John, he wasn't a, he wasn't a pistol John. He wasn't walking around just pulling out the pistol. He was the cool John. He was a family John, John Wayne. And uh, his son-in-law calls him and says, hey, I need to talk to you. I wish I need to get the name of the movie. Son-in-law says, hey, I need to talk to you. So John comes over to the house. John Wayne comes over to the house. The son, he's talking to the son. And then the daughter, John Wayne's daughter, walks in the house. And then John Wayne looks at the son after the son already had told John. The son-in-law told John, hey, she's been out in the neighborhood doing bad things. Talking, gossiping, saying things she should not be saying. That's what, that's what the son-in-law said to John. And John was like, all right, well, you know what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? And he looked at John and did like that. John gave him permission. And John was like, so she's going throughout the, the state and the city bad-mouthing our name? He's like, yes. So the moment the daughter walks in the house, John said, alright, I'm out of here. Handle your business. And the daughter said, no, Dad. No, to John. No, Dad. No, no. Because she already knew what was about to happen. No, Dad. John says, hey, bend her over your lap and whoop her. She's like, no, Dad. No. And John walked out the door and closed the door. But you have to understand, if it's, 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 it's in the movies. It's in the movies, but they got away from them times because they wanted the woman to come out of subjection and be equal to the man. That way, when, and now in these days, because due to the Willie Lynch letter, what did he say? In so many years, what? They're going to wake up. They're going to wake up. Them righteous individuals are going to wake up. So just imagine this. So just imagine if America still had women somewhat in subjection. They couldn't really vote. They couldn't really, I don't care about the voting thing, but I'm just saying, what if America still had women in subjection? And then we woke up, the righteous people, and women are still in subjection. Guess what? Now we take over. Now all the women are doing, because they're, they're, they're in subjection already. But due to Willie Lynch's letter, he says, hey, they're going to wake up. So we don't want these women to still be in subjection. We want to make them hotty. Make them as hotty as possible, so that way when they wake up, they will struggle with their virtuous women. None of them will be virtuous to them. It's going to be a fight. The moment, these, the moment these righteous men wake up, they're going to have nothing but haughty women on their plate. It's going to be hard to find that virtuous woman. So that's why America started changing the laws over a certain time. That's why all the way through the 60s and almost the 70s, women are in subjection. And then come late 80s, 90s, and now, women are, they think they're better than the men. 
because we're we're now to that period. Willie Lynch said, "What was his letter? Three hundred years? We at the three hundred year mark? Two two thousand twelve, two thousand thirteen was the three hundred year mark of Willie Lynch's letter. All right, where we stop off at? One hundred Psalms, one hundred and one and six. We in the Book of Psalms, chapter one on one, verse six, and it reads." My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. All right, 119 and 63 Psalms. So, so it says, my eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. So Ahia says, my eyes will be upon the people that are faithful, that they may dwell with me. So these people will dwell with me. That's what he said. The people that are faithful in the land, that stay true, they will dwell with me. Okay? Go ahead. We in the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 63. And it reads, I am companion of all them that fear thee, and of thee, of them that keepeth thy precepts. So a higher, this is a higher speaking. He says, I am a companion of all them that fear thee. And of them that keep thy precepts, them that keep the the precepts 100%. Like I said, begin this, in, in this lesson. You can't keep 60% of the precepts and then the other 40%, uh, you're like, I'm going to do away with them. I'm cool with them. He says, them that keep all my precepts. I, I'm a companion with them that keep all my precepts. Break down the companion. We have the word companion. And it is H. 2270 H 2270 and it is Chabar 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 Spell it for him C H A B A R All right, what's companion mean? And it means an associate. Fellow Knit together. So companion means an associate. Someone that's knit together. So Ahia says, I am a companion of all them that fear thee and keep my precepts. I am an associate with them. Break down associate, Webster. We have the word associate. And it means to join in company. So Ahia says, I will join you in company if you fear thee and keep all my precepts. Go ahead. As a friend. As a friend. A partner. A partner. To associate with others with to associate others with us in business or in enterprise. So associate. So Ahia says, <coughs> I am a companion of them that fear thee and keep my precepts. Associates means to join in company, a friend, to associate others with us in business. That's what associate means. So Ahia says, that's who I am. All right. And companion means who keeps company with one another. All right. So that's what Ahia says. I am an associate with those that are in business with me. Go to Romans 12 and 1. Let's see what this means. Romans 12 and 1. So if you want to be an associate with Ahia, you must follow his precepts 100%. You can't follow some. And they said, well, I don't like those. Well, that means you're not in business with a higher. That's point blank. And we're supposed to be in business with a higher because it says we're business partners. We're basically business partners with a higher and Yeshaya. Romans 12 and 1. We in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. And it reads, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that ye... Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your re your reasonable service. So this is your service to sacrifice your body to a higher. This is your service. This is what you're supposed to be doing. You sacrifice your body to him, not nobody else. Verse 2. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. Don't follow this world. But ye be... But ye... 
Be, but, ye, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. So you have to renew your mind to prove what is good to a higher. So he can accept you into his business. This is what we're reading right here now. Go ahead. Verse 3. Verse 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Don't, don't think you're, you're better than anybody else. You're nothing. A wicked person is what? Low, said the Most High. You're worth nothing. Go ahead. But to think soberly, according as the Most High hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. So the Most High is going to deal with you according to your faith. If your faith is wavering like a wave, one day you believe in the words of the Most High and the precepts, and then the next day you just got all these problems because you're in the faith, he's going to deal with you according to that. Verse 4. In the flesh, I mean. Verse 4. Verse 4. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, mm -hmm. so we, being many, are one mind in Christ. And every one member, one, every, it's a lot. And every one members one of another. So it says, for as we have many members, so we have a lot of members in one body. And all members have not the same office. So it's talking about a business here. We're all, we all are part of a business. We're supposed to be. We're all supposed to be a part of this business that we just read. And we all have our own separate office. So we being many are one body in Yeshia. And every one members, and every one members one of another. So we're all part of this business. We all work together. Go back to Psalms 101 and 7. So it says an associate, I mean uh, Psalms 119 and 63 says a companion of all that keep his precepts. So if we want to be a companion of all with a higher, we all gotta work together in this body, which is this business. All right, let's finish it out, 101, verse 7, Psalms. We're in the book of Psalms, chapter 101, verse 7, and it reads, He that worketh, worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. So he that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. So if you're working deceit and you're doing wrong, most I say, you ain't going to dwell in my business. You ain't going to dwell in my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. Verse 8. Verse 8. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Most High. So the Most High says, I'm going to cut you off sooner or later. You can do wicked all you want, but sooner or later, I'm going to cut you off. Because he's going to destroy all wicked of the land. All right. Proverbs 14 and 9. Go ahead. We're in the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 9. And it reads, fools make a mock at sin. So fools laugh at sin. Ha <laughs> ha, whatever. I know I'm sinning, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm doing wrong. Yeah, I know I'm slandering this person behind their back, but <laughs> whatever. Go ahead. It says, fools make a mock, make a mock at sin. But among the righteous, there is favor. The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and the strange doeth not intermeddle with his joy mm -hmm. the house of the wicked shall be overthrown but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish so the upright person is going to flourish regardless if you talk about this person behind their back or whatever and they're upright they're going to flourish and the wicked shall be overthrown you'll be th overthrown after a while all right last precepts of the night uh, titus two and one go ahead we in the book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 1, and it reads, But speaketh thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. So the aged man, so a wise man, let him be sober, grave, temperate, short-tempered, Sound in faith, in charity, and patience. So a righteous man needs to be all those things. Patient, charity, which is love, short-tempered, sober. Verse 3. Verse 3. 
The aged man likewise. No, the aged woman. The, um, it's a lot. The aged man, aged woman likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not giving too much wine, teachers of good things. So a wise woman, likewise, like the righteous man, they, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Not false accusers. Don't be a partakers of false ac accusations. Teachers of good things. So if you see somebody doing wrong, a wise woman, you 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 re reroute the situation and teach good things. Verse four. Verse four. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, mm -hmm. to be discreet. Chast, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of the Most High be not blasphemed. So you have to obey your husband, especially if he's a righteous man, that word of word don't be blasphemed. If you are speaking evil things against your man, now the word is being blasphemed because all he's doing is being righteous and trying to teach you the right thing and then you're going behind his back and speaking evil things against him. Verse 6. Verse 6. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded in all things, showing themselves a pattern of good works, in doctrine, showing uncorruptedness, gravity, sincerity. Verse eight: Sound speech that cannot be condone, condemned; that he that is of the of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. So it says in verse 8, sound speech. That means sound doctrine. Somebody that studies. Sound speech. Nothing's wrong with it. Sound speech that cannot be condemned. Break down the, give them the definition for condemn. Webster. Uh, we have the Webster. Coming out of Webster's and we have the word condemned. And it means pronounced to be wrong. Guilty. Worthless. Forfeited. So condemn means pronounced to be wrong. Sound speech that cannot be pronounced to be wrong. So if you can't prove, if you can't prove what this person is doing is wrong, why are you speaking evil things against them? That's what that just said. Sound speech that cannot be condemned, cannot be pronounced wrong, that he that is of contrary part may be shamed. So he that is part of this needs to be shamed. If you're going back and speaking wrongfully against someone that's doing sound speech, you need to be ashamed. Having no evil thing to say of you. So don't, don't, so if you're doing everything right, nobody should have no evil thing to say of you. If you're bringing sound speech, if you're bringing proof, no one should be behind your back speaking an evil saying against you. And whoever is doing it should be ashamed of themselves. So that's just read. Alright? So that's why when I speak to you guys, I know you might not like some of it, but I give y'all proof. I go into depth. I give you definitions. So for it, shame on anybody that's behind my back speaking evil against me. Because if you have a problem with me, come to me. I'll talk to you. You got a problem with me, come to me. I'll sit you down and say, okay, what's the problem, sister? Okay, what's the problem, brother? Hey, my fault. I'm sorry for offending you. Hey, can we fix it? Okay, can we? All right, then. Let's, let's, all right, that's how it's supposed to be. But anybody speaking evil against the elder. I'm the elder of this group. By the way, my name is Elder from here on out. Not brother. I, I think I deserve that title. I'm the elder of the group. And I'm going to now go by my Hebrew name. Ain't Brother Ed no more. It'll be Elder I Shaya Shaya Mawan. Alright? I'm going to say it for y'all again. Elder I Shaya Mawan. Aha. Uh -huh. What does odd mean? Odd means witness. Alright? And what is odd in English? Odd in English is Ed. My whole name is in the Bible. So odd, which is A H D, is E D in English, which means witness. Sha Ya Mawan S H A Y A M A W A N is Shimon in English. My middle name is Shimon. That's in the Bible. 
it means desert or wilderness. And then Ahab. Ahab means love in English. And my last name is Love. Ed Shimon Love. Elder I Shayamawan Aha. And we'll close it out with that. So we'll say Shalom. All praises to the Most High Ahaya. And we'll open it up for questions after we pray out.